Since the trade of Marquise Hollywood Brown to the Arizona Cardinals, the Rashad Bateman hype train has been rolling strong. He's currently ranked as the wide receiver 38 on Fantasy Pros after finishing wide receiver 79 last year. At Triple Play Fantasy's YouTube channel, we want to help you win your leagues, so we made a video to give you four reasons that you should not be drafting Rashad Bateman. Before I get into those reasons, let's talk a bit about Bateman's physical profile and why he was a first round draft pick last year. It wasn't Bateman's speed as he runs a 4-5 40-yard dash. It wasn't his agility as he was in the 43rd percentile in his class. It wasn't his catch radius as he was in the 58th percentile for his class and is only 6 feet tall. It was the fact that he's an incredible route runner and had a 36% target share in college. That's 98th percentile in his class. He's a sure-handed, dependable possession receiver, exactly what the Ravens thought they could use alongside Hollywood Brown as their home run hitter. After Hollywood's trade, people think Bateman is going to take over as the number one target. Here's why that's unlikely. First, Bateman likely won't run the kind of routes that bring huge fantasy games, so you'd be relying almost entirely on points per reception. Rashad Bateman had the lowest average depth of target, or ADOT, in the offense in 2021. Hollywood Brown's ADOT was 11.25 yards. Mark Andrews was next at 10.29. At third is Rashad Bateman with an 8.9 average depth of target. That means his route tree was that of a possession receiver, not a downfield threat. Not only does this make sense for his athletic metrics, but it also fits his role out of college. Second, one of the reasons the Bateman hype train is so strong is that people are imagining Brown's vacated targets will go to Bateman. And even if that's true, it's not anything to get excited about. While Hollywood Brown had season-long success, his game-to-game -game success is inconsistent, which is a headache for fantasy managers. Hollywood Brown topped out at wide receiver 23 last year, but 11 of his 17 games were under double-digit points in a non-PPR league. This is the exact reason that Hollywood wanted to be traded. Take a look at this video courtesy of I Am Athlete. If you're saying that you, you did go and ask for trades, I know it was out on the Ravens website last night. We hadn't heard it, you know, this offseason. So you specifically asked the Ravens for a trade. Yeah, I asked them for a trade after the season. Okay, so what, what was it about the system that just wasn't clicking for you that didn't mesh? Why did you feel like you needed to, to be traded and go, go somewhere else? Uh, it was just, I mean, the situations I was put in a lot of times. I mean, like as a receiver, me, even in college, I didn't catch as many balls. But the situations I was put in, I you know, I was put in situations that they helped me thrive. And I just felt, you know, times times throughout my career there, I wasn't put in the best situations. And it was just something that I was dealing with. Um, but you know, I never complained. You know, I just kept, you know, for Lamar, I would just keep working, bro. Let's get the Super Bowl, let's get the Super Bowl. And even to this day, I know the Ravens, they're 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 gonna be where they need to be because of Lamar Jackson. So it was one of those things that like, like I felt like they didn't, they didn't need me. Like y'all gonna be in a situation with the scheme they, they run, they're gonna be in a good situation regardless. Right. So it was it was one of those things that I just wanted to get to a situation, you know, where I could be happy and that I could contribute the way I know I, I can. Uh, and did that play a, a role in you saying, you know what, I think there's more out there for me? Definitely, I mean, I, you know, I look at, you know, I'll get to the playoffs, you know, they use me how I'm supposed to be used. I go for 100 yard games and then I'm like, okay, this this should lead on. Then I go games where, you know, we losing. They wait till like the third or the fourth, start getting me the ball. I help the team win. Then I go to the following game and not get the ball. So it, it was just one of those things, like as a mind, a mind thing, like it, it, I'm too much of a competitor. To, to not get the ball to the fourth. Like, I'm right. too much a competitor to not help my team till we down and out. And then it's like, all right, here we go. But it was one of those things. Like, definitely, I mean, I train with a lot of guys. A lot of guys got respect for me. A lot of guys come to me for advice. And when they, when they be putting up more yards, it's nice to me. So it's just like, I'm like, man, I might as well just try to, you know, I'm young, try to just go somewhere. You know, I love Kyler, you know, that's one of my best friends. And I mean, unfortunate, you know, to go there and learn from Hop and, you know, have a good group of guys around me. Third, Mark Andrews is the receiver that they can count on consistently from week to week. I believe the 2022 draft shows this team wants to be more devoted to the run 
and work in the middle of the field where they've had the most success. That means Harbaugh wants to focus on a run-heavy, tight-end dominated offense, Lamar's strength says an NFL passer. This style of offense also complements the Ravens' identity as a dominant defense. They want to get the lead and run down the clock on you. When they aren't running the ball, they're going to complete short passes to replicate a run. Here's their head coach talking about the draft. We talked to Lewis Riddick made a point during your draft that you guys, by, by taking Charlie Kohler, by taking Isaiah Likely, combined with the people you already have on your roster, sort of setting the tone that you want to control the middle of the field. Would you agree with that assessment as it pertains uh, particularly to the offense? Well, yeah, we definitely want to control the middle of the field. I mean, that's, that's been a big part of what we've done since 2019. In the run, you know, we're going to, we want to control the A-gaps in the run game first. We want to control the middle of the field in the pass game. Always attack down the middle, be strong down the middle, but also then attack sideline to sideline and deep, certainly as well. And that's something we work on also. So we're going to be strong down the middle, and I think we're going to be strong on the perimeter as well, both in the run game and the pass game. And uh, we've got some good young receivers too. Uh, yeah, we're excited about these tight ends. Charlie Kohler, you know, Mark Andrews is a part of it. It's going to be interesting to see what Isaiah Likely does. I can't, cannot wait to get him to work in minicamp next week and see how he plays. But uh, we've got some young wide receivers we took last year, guys like Tyler Wallace, uh, James Brochet, Devin Duvernay, really good young receivers. Rashad Baker was a first-round pick last year. So you know, we've got to give these young guys a chance to develop. And there's a chance people will pick up a veteran receiver somewhere along the way here also. You never know. We've had a lot of undrafted free agents that have, that have done well. But we put them out there in the field with Lamar and get to work here next week and uh, get rolling. So I do like the idea, though, and I think it was stated very well by you guys. You know, be strong down the middle, both on offense and defense. That's a, that's a big deal. Right at the end of John Harbaugh's interview there, he said something that I think is another reason why you shouldn't be drafting Rashad Bateman. I don't think the Ravens are done adding to their roster. There are a multitude of other wide receivers available that could supplant Bateman as they are either more proven or provide a different skill set. The list of talented wide receivers still available is staggering. Odell Beckham, 29 years old. Jarvis Landry, 29 years old. Julio Jones, 33 years old. Will Fuller, 28 years old. T.Y. Hilton, 32 years old. Cole Beasley, 33 years old. Emmanuel Sanders, 35 years old. All of these players could end up having a substantial role in the Ravens' offense. There's no doubt in my mind that Rashad Bateman is a talent. I'm not saying he isn't. But fantasy football is all about opportunity and putting yourself in the best position to win. If you're depending on Rashad Bateman to be a consistent piece to lead you to a fantasy championship, you should look elsewhere.